a little, a little piece of dust. Can you see it? No, of course not. But let's imagine that this is our world. Then how big do you think the universe would be? Would it be as big as this building or maybe as big as uh, our Earth, the solar system, the galaxy, our galaxy, the Milky Way? <laughs> I think that might be a good comparison. And then this, this little piece of dust is the only place where we can live and where our children can live. And what are we doing with it? A few years ago, I went for a walk with a friend along the Mars, the River Mars. The Mars just suffered from an extreme high water level. The sandbags were still in place, but the water lowered to normal again. But one could exactly see how high the water had been. As far as my eyes could see, all the trees along the Mars were covered with plastic bags. And I asked myself this question, why is nobody doing anything about this? That's all I did, asking a rhetorical question, and I went on with my life. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> then, at the beginning of 2011, I made a resolution. I wanted to do something about complaining. People are complaining about everything and nothing. And complaining only lowers energy, that of yourself and of your partner. So. I started this blog, Clean, my blog, Clean. Clean is a Dutch acronym for Klagen loont echt absoluut niet. <laughs> Meaning something like complaining doesn't get you anywhere. So since I was writing about uh, complaining, I had a good look in the mirror. Well, what was I complaining about? Besides, for the need of a haircut, I saw that I was complaining about people littering our streets. So what could I do? I started picking up litter. First, surreptitiously, because I felt a little ashamed. Recognize it? And I started reading about the consequences of litter. And then, I saw this picture. You saw it already. <laughs> yes, that picture. This picture is made in the beginning 2011, by Piet Driesen, from a tree along the Mars, the River Mars, after another high tide. Yes, this is the Netherlands. Once more, I asked the question, why is nobody doing anything about this? But this time, I didn't want it to become a rhetorical question. I decided to become that nobody. As I read more, I became more and more aware of the consequences of litter. Did you know that 80% of the plastic soup is made up of land-based litter? We all know what the plastic soup is. It's the common name for the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the churchyard of all our thrown away plastics. The plastic soup, it's a fantastic name, don't you think? It looks like soup, and most of all, we're going to eat it. Better put, our children are going to eat it. I see some puzzled faces here. Birds and fish mistake the plastic for food. And that is how all the toxins in and attached to the plastic enter our food chain. Plastic bottles left out, <coughs> on the, uh, out there on, in, in the open everywhere. People are told a plastic bottle will remain lying there at least a decade. <laughs> you wish. The wind will take it away to a canal. It drifts off into a river and goes off to out the sea and out to our oceans. More than 100 billion kilos of plastic drifts out there in, the, in our oceans. More than 100 billion kilos, billion, not million, billion. 
billion kilos. This number is too big to comprehend. So, since we don't know how big 100 billion is, we feel nothing, so we do nothing. But let me translate this into something we can comprehend. If we send out 5,000 ships to clean it up, we can't clean it up, because if we do, we would suck all life out of the ocean. But just let's pretend. We send out 5,000 ships to clean it up. We would need another 500 years to clean it up. 500 years ago, Christopher Columbus discovered America. We humans managed to create this soup problem in less than 50 years. So, to clean up the waste is a waste of time. We should focus on stopping the growth. This is the hope, most important sentence of my whole talk. You forget, can forget about everything, but please remember this. Is Atsma in the room? <clears throat> we should focus on stopping the growth. But do you see that the mindset that created this soup problem also contains the seed for the solution? One person who drops a bottle, plump, thinks, oh, it's only one bottle, that doesn't make a difference. But that mindset accounts for 80 billion kilos out there in the ocean, in our oceans, 80% of 100 billion. Your mindset is picking up one bottle. Ah, it doesn't make a difference. But you see, it does. It does. It does make a difference. If you can change our mindset and, and pick that bottle up, we can turn this problem around. Our weakness becomes our strength. You can think, oh, it's only one drop in the ocean, but still it's a cleaner ocean. Every drop counts. All those individual drops make for a sea change. Consider, even a heavy shower starts with the first drop. I pick up litter now every time I cycle. Effortless. And I calculated that if every citizen would pick up one piece of plastic once a week, the growth of the plastic soup by land-based litter would stop. Is that too much of an effort? One piece a week. <laughs> Just... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Hmm. I can hear you think. Do you expect me to pick up someone else's trash? Yes, I do. I do. It doesn't belong anymore to the person who ditched it. It's our litter, since it can end up in our food chain. And if there's a 10 euro note on the street, I don't see you walking by, hmm, that's not mine. <laughs> but do you know, the reward is far greater when you pick up litter. Everywhere you go, the world behind you is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more beautiful, and hence better. How often do we hear people say, I want to li leave this world a better place. Here's your chance. Right here, right now. So next time you see litter, pick it up. Do it for yourself. Do it for your children and for generations to come. Thank you.